Hello everyone, Cool Dude Cobra my here back again with another episode of Choose Your Character, my mainstay series where I take a look at newcomers you suggest and I make a move set for them. Today we have a bit of an interesting and controversial hit, uh, pick. Uh, basically, I'm. It's an anime slash manga character, and honestly, we all know that one of those is never getting into Smash. The only reason I'm doing this, however, is because, uh,. Me and one of my friends got into a uh, discussion as to what this character would be like in Smash, and uh, we put a move set together, so I figured why not throw out a quick video kind of talking about this character. Uh, just a heads up, I'm trying out a new mic this week, so if my audio sounds a bit different, uh, it's that's probably why. Please let me know if it's better or worse than how it has been in the previous two videos. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the character. Today, we will be going over Jotaro Kujo from the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure series of anime and manga written by Hirohiko Araki. Um, as stated, anime and manga characters, along with every other non-video game character, is not going to get into Smash. Uh, but that being said, uh, I think it could be fun to discuss what he could be like. So, without further ado, let's begin the moveset video for Jotaro Kujo. Well... Before getting into his moveset, I should probably discuss a bit as to who Jotaro Kujo is. As stated earlier, uh, he's from the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure series, and uh, basically, a brief summary of that series is that there is a family known as the Joestars, and the uh, it started with Jonathan Joestar, who was the first hero of that bloodline. And as the generations went by, the Joestar bloodline has saved the day over and over again. Uh, it's kind of like a Fire Emblem situation, where each chapter slash game slash part in this instance has their own uh, protagonist and set of characters. Uh, that being said, Jotaro is the most iconic Jojo, uh, considered by most to be anyways. And he also has the most iconic stand, which, what a stand is, it's basically a visualization of one's fighting spirit. Kind of like uh, the Personas are in the Persona series, if you know what I'm talking about there. Uh, Jotaro's stand is Star Platinum, and uh, yeah, it. what it is, is it is a humanoid figure that has the ability to hit enemies really hard, has very good speed and durability, and incredible precision. So yeah, Jotaro is definitely a character that could have a very interesting moveset in Smash, so with enough stalling, I think it's time that we finally discuss it. So let's get into it, starting right now. Alright, so let's get into the moveset, and I think we should start off, as usual, with all the cosmetic stuff about him. So, starting things off with his model, Jotaro's default appearance would be how he appears in Part 3 of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusaders. This is his uh, most iconic look, I'd say. It's uh, pretty basic. It has the trench coat that he's known for and stuff. Um, but yeah, this costume, it has alternate palettes based off the following characters from Part 3 Stardust Crusaders. These characters are Joseph Joestar, Kakyoin, Avdol, Polnareff, and Dio. I forgot to mention this, but the uh, color of Star Platinum also changes to match the stands of each of these uh, teammates. So, for example, when you're playing as the Dio uh, alternate costume color palette it changes star platinum to have a more to have a color scheme that resembles that of dio's stand the world but we're not quite done with his alternate costumes yet as he has one he has a completely different model which is based on his appearance from part four diamond is unbreakable of jojo's bizarre adventure for this costume he puts on the white trench coat that he has in that part of jojo and uh, this alternate costume also changes Star Platinum's color scheme to match how it appears in that part. And then finally, his uh, last alternate costume is it changes the color scheme of his Part 4 appearance to resemble the color scheme of his Part 6 appearance of Jojo. And uh, Star Platinum's colors change to match his daughter's stand, Stone Free. Alright, so we're done with all the uh, alternate costumes and stuff, so... Uh, Let's move on to his victory screens. Uh, these all have, uh, these are all kind of basic, although there is one with a reference that I'll try to mention if I get to it. Uh, the first one is just Jotaro and Star Platinum punching around the victory screen before his name flashes on screen and Star Platinum disappears behind him. 
This one's pretty basic. It doesn't really have a reference to anything. I just thought it would be cool. Uh, his second victory screen has Jotaro and Star Platinum strike a pose like they do in Part 3's first opening, uh, Stand Proud. They would, this is just a uh, neat little reference to the source material. And then his final pose is the uh, one that I put a lot of thought into, I think, and it has the coolest reference out of all of them. So what happens is, as soon as he wins, Jotaro uh, kind of just turns around and starts walking the other direction. And as he does so, a piece of paper comes out from behind his uh, jacket. And it flies in front of the camera, and it just says uh, Jotaro Kujo's name instead of the announcer's home screen usually saying it. Uh, this is a reference to the Steely Dan fight from Jojo, in which he uh, signed a receipt saying that he uh, got his vengeance against uh, said character. Alright, so, uh, now that we're done with that stuff, let's throw him into the game and see how he actually functions. Jotaro's default stance is a idle stance based on his stance... Oh, I said stance a lot there. Uh, it's based on his uh, idle animation from Heritage from the Future, Capcom's uh, 1990s Jojo fighting game. It was in arcade cabinets. Uh, and then for his idle animations, for his first one, we see uh, a transparent star platinum hand uh, appears next to Jotaro's. It kind of clenches its fist a couple times before dis eh, evaporating. And then his second idle animation, uh, Jotaro touches the brim of his hat before uh, returning his hand to his pocket. These are just both kind of to show off his personality and stuff. Uh, neither of them have too many references. Uh, one of them is to show off Star Platinum, and the other one is to show off his hat, uh, who's, that, which he always wears. It's kind of his trademark thing. And, uh, yeah, uh, let's get into his moveset now. So starting things off with his jab... Uh, he has a three-hit jab, but if you press the button enough, it can also become a rapid jab. So what happens here is for for the first two hits of the jab, it's just two basic punches from Jotaro. And the third hit sees Star Platinum appear and punch the opponent downwards. However, if you press the button rapidly, uh, Star Platinum also appears and he m performs a more rapid punching motion. And the final hit is an uppercut, which can knock opponents away. Alright, now moving on to his dash attack. For this move, Jotaro uh, just kind of, he gets on the ground and slides forward. There isn't really a reference behind this, it's more just another dash attack that can knock opponents upward, allowing you to follow up for quick combos. Uh, but yeah, it's just pretty basic, it lets you attack while you're moving forward, and uh, yeah, it keeps you pretty low to the ground as well, so you can avoid some projectiles. But yeah, that's about it for his dash attack. Alright, starting off with his tilt attacks now, uh, we'll start with his F-tilt. For this attack, uh, Star Platinum appears right in front of Jotaro and performs an overhead strike. This is similar to his slam attack that he has in uh, Heritage for the Future, so it's kind of based off of that. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but it has really good knockback. So yeah, uh, now on to his up-tilt. For this attack, uh, Star Platinum once again appears and he performs an uppercut punch. This could be compared to something like Mario's up tilt, except it's a bit slower and uh, has a lot more knockback potential. So it's more of a kill move rather than a damage rack, or damage rack up tool. And ending off the tilts with his down tilt, for this attack we uh, have Jotaro kicking at the ground while he's crouching. No star platinum involved, he just kind of uh, kicks at the enemy, so yeah. It's really quick, and it can combo into itself. If there was a move I would compare it to, it would probably be Ryu down air. Not down air, excuse me, down tilt. So yeah, that, that's a good comparison, I think. And with that, we'll move on to his smash attacks. Oh, my mic got a bit messed up there. Um, so yeah, for his forward smash, Jotaro summons Star Platinum uh, right in front of him, and he winds up a punch and performs a powerful hook at the opponent's face area. It's, uh, it comes out pretty quick, so you can use it to hit opponents, but other than that, it's pretty basic overall. So, yeah. Um, moving on to his up tilt for this attack. Star Platinum, uh, clap... <laughs> sorry, he claps his hands together right above Jotaro's head. Uh, a move that I would compare this to would definitely be Donkey Kong's Up Smash. It doesn't really have a reference per se, but I could just—it's something I could see him doing. 
this is uh, it allows them to catch opponents who are in the air, so it's uh, pretty good overall. And then ending things off with his down, this is uh, this is also based on the uh, slam attack that he has in the Heritage to the Future game. So yeah, when you use it, Star Platinum winds up his fist and punches the ground so powerful that it sends shockwaves on either side of him. These shockwaves damage the opponent and knock them in either direction. So yeah, once again, a pretty useful move overall. Alright, and with that, next we have his aerial attacks. <clears throat> Beginning with his neutral air, uh, for this attack, Jojo performs a kick attack where he just kind of sticks his leg out. There's no reference to this move, it's just kind of a move that you can use while falling to protect yourself, sort of like how Luigi and Mario have the ones where they just kind of hold out their leg. Just a normal kick neutral air to protect you while you fall. Uh, next up with forward air, uh, for this attack, Star Platinum performs an overhead blow. It, uh, this attack is basically comparable to Mario forward air. It uh, spikes if you hit the opponent right but it does a lot of damage and knocks them directly forward even if you miss. And then moving on to his up air. For this attack, Star Platinum performs an upwards punch. I guess I could have just said an uppercut. Uh, this move is almost identical to Ryu's up air. It, uh, he punches upward in a motion almost like flexing your muscles, and it knocks the opponent pretty high, but not as, high as, his for not as far, I mean, as his forward air. Uh... Now for his back air, uh, for this attack it's just another powerful punch backwards, except this time it has even more knockback power than his forward air. Uh, the back air is a lot slower and overall just kind of a lot harder to hit, though, so sometimes it'll be better to use the forward air. And then ending things off with his down air, for this attack, uh, Star Platinum s uh, slams the enemy Oh my god, no, sorry, I was reading the wrong thing. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, what I meant to say is for his down air, uh, for this attack, Star Platinum's knee appears where Jotaro's foot is, and it kicks downward. Uh, if the knee hits the stage or an opponent, Jotaro shoots back upwards. This is based on a uh, maneuver he performs in the manga and anime when fighting the enemy Naduel. He uh, kicks the ground to propel himself forward like a like uh, using leg muscles to, to propel yourself higher, essentially. And uh, with that done, we'll move on to his grab attacks. As usual, we'll start off the grab segment by talking about his, for, uh, his grab itself. Uh, when you press the whatever button you have grab map to, uh, Jotaro will just hold out his hand, and if, he, if the grab connects, he'll uh, start grabbing the opponent by the collar of the shirt or their neck area in general. Uh, his pummel uh, would consist of him hitting the opponent with his knee. The pummel would do 2% or so, normal pummel damage, nothing too ob obscene. Uh, but getting into his throws, uh, starting things off with his forward throw, this one is simply just based off of his throw attack from Heritage to the Future. Star Platinum appears and punches the opponent in the stomach area, causing them to be launched forward. This is not a kill throw or a combo throw, but it looks really cool in my opinion. Although I know that looking cool does not make a smash move good. Now uh, for his up throw, uh, with this attack, Star Platinum punches the enemy upward. It's more like a uppercut motion, sort of like Ryu's sure you can attack. Uh, this causes the opponent to be launched upward a pretty fair distance overall. Uh, it's a decent throw. It's not kill throw worthy, but it can be comboed into certain moves at lower percentages. Uh, now to his back throw. For this attack, Star Platinum doesn't even show up at all, but rather Jotaro just uh, t throws his enemy behind him like a sandbag. Uh, yeah, this attack is... Okay, no, I'm sorry, I messed that up. Forward throw is his kill throw. This is the one that is not the kill throw. He, uh, he just kind of knocks them a little bit behind him. You can, uh, if you react quick enough, you can run after them and follow up with a dash attack, but it would take a little bit of practice or something. And then finishing things off with his down throw. For this attack, uh, Star Platinum slams the enemy down before punching them hundreds of times really quickly. 
<clears throat> and uh, this launches them upward, and this is his combo throw. So yeah, he he does have a combo throw. So if you're just... Oh, ooh, I tapped the mic, my bad. Uh, so yeah, if you're just starting off the match, Jotaro can run up, grab the opponent, down throw, and then chain it into something like forward throw. So overall, it's a pretty decent... He has a pretty decent gr uh, throw kit. He has a forward kill throw, which would be good at the edge. And then he has a uh, combo down throw. So, yeah. Alright, now that we're getting into Jotaro's special moves, I would like to clarify that I will be covering these out of order. I'll be starting with Jotaro's down special, as it is a... Uh, uh, you, you need to understand that before the rest of his special moveset uh, makes sense. So, yeah, we'll start off with that. So, uh, here we go into the special moves. Let me get my notes in the right spot. Alright, yeah. So, uh, Jotaro's, uh, <laughs> his, uh, down special is Stand Power, and what this does is there is an icon, a little bar next to Jotaro's health icon, and what this is, is it is a, uh, stand health meter. So, both Jotaro and Star Platinum have their own health meter, and, uh, essentially when you use down special, uh, you can toggle between Star Platinum, either fighting alongside Jotaro, or hiding inside of him. Uh, basically, when Star Platinum is out, all of your moves are a bit faster and do a bit more damage. However, if Star Platinum takes enough damage to where his health bar is completely empty, he will, uh, you'll enter a uh, shield break status of sorts, and you won't be able to use him until the bar is completely full again. Uh, the bar refills over time, while uh, Jotaro is not using Star Platinum. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, a lot of the, a lot of his other special moves have uh, the properties of them changed, depending on whether or not Jotaro is currently using Star Platinum. So let's go over some of those as we get into his neutral special, which is Starfinger. Uh, in the manga and anime, Starfinger is an attack that Jotaro uses when he is trying to outspace his opponents while doing lethal damage. So what this move does in Smash is almost identical to its function in Heritage for the Future, in the sense that when inputted, Jotaro begins holding out his finger, or not Jotaro, but Star Platinum kind of holds his finger back, and as soon as the special button is released, uh, he shoots his finger forward, and if it hits anyone, they yank... Star Platinum yanks the enemy towards Jotaro, where Jotaro can follow up with a quick uh, couple attacks or something. Uh, so yeah, that is what the move functions like when Jotaro is not using Star Platinum. However, if Star Platinum is currently active while Jotaro uses the move, uh, instead of them both being active, instead of both Jotaro and Star Platinum being out, Jotaro kind of steps into the background while Star Platinum charges up the Starfinger attack if that makes sense. So, while he's holding down the special button, Jotaro himself can't be hurt, but rather Star Platinum can. This is essentially, like, making Star Platinum take the damage for Jotaro while he's charging up an attack. Uh, so yeah, the Starfinger in standoff and stand-on mode, uh, both of those forms of it are pretty good combo starters, although at times it may be a bit difficult to get off. Moving on to his side special, for this attack we have his uh, iconic ability, the Beatdown, which if you've, uh, basically if you don't know, Jotaro's main thing is that he punches the opponent a lot of times very quickly while shouting his uh, catchphrase Aura over and over again. Uh, so yeah, what this attack does, I'm going to refer to the stand uh, when you're using your stand and when you aren't using your stand as on and off. So say Jotaro's stand is off, what this does is Star Platinum spawns directly in front of Jotaro and punches forward multiple times. Uh, while he's out, Star Platinum can take damage if he is hit. Uh, and this variation of the move has very little knockback, but it acts as sort of a, <clears throat> a wall between you and your opponents. It does uh, decent damage, though, and uh, you can grab the opponent and move around freely while he's uh, punching the area that you summoned him in. However, the move changes when... Uh, Jotaro is currently using uh, Star Platinum via his down special. Uh, if Star Platinum is fighting alongside Jotaro, uh, Star Platinum spawns directly in front of him and 
does the same attack where he punches directly forward, except this time he slowly advances while doing so, and uh, so does Jotaro. He walks directly behind him. So, yeah, the... Um, yeah, and he will continue walking forward and punching the longer you hold the button, and as soon as you let go of it, he'll let out a uh, powerful hook attack that'll launch the opponent pretty far directly forwards. So yeah, overall, both of these moves have utility. Uh, the side, When it's off, you can use it as a more defensive tool to keep yourself safe, and while it is on, you can use it as a way to almost intimidate your opponent, or if you know that they're going to be recovering off stage or something, you can use it in the air to slowly walk towards your opponent while they're in the air. And finally, we're going to wrap up his special moves by talking about his up special, which is, uh, this move is actually completely different depending on whether or not Jotaro has, is using his stand at the time or not. But uh, it's called Fastball Special or Boost. So starting things off with Fastball Special, if Jotaro is not using Star Platinum and he's fighting by himself, uh, when you use the up special, uh, Star Platinum will appear and he will throw Jotaro upward. Uh, while he's being launched by Star Platinum, Jotaro will deal damage on his Ascend, but it doesn't send him into freefall. Although, to counteract this, it does not launch him very far at all. Be so it's more of a... Uh, it's more safe, but it's a lot more risky in terms of you might not get back to the stage. However, if Jotaro's stand is on, uh, Star Platinum... Uh, uses boost, which what that is, is it is a uh, attack in which Star Platinum holds his hands together and gives Jotaro a little leg up boost, where he kind of tosses him upward with Jotaro using his cupped hands as a springboard. And the uh, this this launches Jotaro higher than the fastball special variant of the up special. However, it does not deal damage on the way, and this does this also does not put him into free fall. So yeah. And then we're going to finish things off with Jotaro's Final Smash. Uh, now, in terms of what the Final Smash could be, there's quite a few options, but what I decided to do is the uh, uh, the Final Smash is called uh, Here's Your Receipt Paid in Full, or just Paid in Full for short. And what this is, it's a recreation of the Steely Dan beatdown from uh, the anime and manga. And what this does is, when you hit the opponent with the Final Smash, they're taken into a cutscene where he just punches them hundreds upon hundreds of times from various different camera angles, and then he eventually launches them into a clock tower, and then that's the end of the Final Smash. As usual, I didn't put too much thought into that, as I'm thinking about this for more a competitive mindset, but whatever. And with that, we're done with his moveset. I know that this episode was not the best at all. In fact, I kind of think this may have been my worst one yet because my I'm using this really bad mic. So please forgive me about that. I'll try to get a better mic soon. And I might remake this video if, if this uh, audio ends up being too bad. But we're not done yet. Uh, we still have two things left to talk about, that being his stage and music. Uh, in terms of what Jotaro's stage would be, if I had to pick one, I would say that the best bet would be the R Cairo Rooftops. Now, uh, Cairo is the main focus of Stardust Crusade Crusaders, in which that's where Dio, the main antagonist, is having his base. Uh, the, the stage's layout would consist of multiple rooftop buildings, and you would just jump between them. And then in the background, you could see more buildings. However, occasionally in the background, you would see the... You could see... Uh, uh, <laughs> my bad. Uh... This is the area, essentially, in the background you can see, you'll occasionally see either Kakyoin, Polnareff, Avdol, and Iggy appear on the rooftops. And uh, each of these uh, characters that are only there to reference, they would occasionally have an attack that they would perform to make a stage hazard. Like, for example, Kakyoin would occasionally perform his 20 meter emerald splash move, and it would become a stage hazard, where like if you touched it you would become electrified for a little while. But the real enemy of the stage is uh, Dio. While you don't get to fight him yourself, occasionally uh, he will appear on the stage. Well, I mean, I guess you can fight him because you you'll be you. 
I have it written down that you'd be able to KO him if you dealt enough damage to him. But, uh, yeah. Alright, so yeah, he's essentially a stage boss. And the attacks he performs is occasionally he will freeze time, including the timer of the match, for five seconds or so. Um, then occasionally he will just throw knives at the opponents. And then finally, occasionally he will jump off the top of the screen and come back with a steamroller. And he will slam it into the rooftop, trying to crush various opponents. I uh, thought this would be a really cool uh, way to incorporate the rest of the characters from Part 3 into a stage, so I hope that that kind of... I hope that that kind of makes sense, I guess. And finally, all we have left to talk about is the music he would come with. Now, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has some of the greatest music I've ever heard, uh, but I'm just going to pick three songs for this Challenger Pack, and the three I would pick would go as follows. Jotaro's theme would probably be the main song of the pack, and I could potentially even see it getting a remix with Jotaro's release. So I'll play that for you here. Then we have Virtuous Pope, or Virtuitous Pope, depending on how you pronounce it, which is Kakyoin's theme, who is Jotaro's best friend. And I just really like this song, so I think it would be really cool to see it in Smash. I'll play that for you guys here. And then finally, I think that the third song that could be neat would be a instrumental cover of Stand Proud, which is the main opening from the JoJo anime adaptation. I'll play that here. And with that, we're finally done with this episode. Uh, once again, I really apologize. I think this episode was quite bad, honestly. This, um, since my computer mic... Essentially, long story short, I went out and bought a $60 microphone, and it broke after, like, the third video. So these past couple episodes, I've been using my computer mic, which is super staticky, and that's why you can hear static in a lot of the backgrounds of my more recent videos. But, uh... <laughs> I'm using a headset to record this one, and I don't think this is working out at all, because upon re-watching this footage, you can hear a lot of my uh, S's make a very annoying sound. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this anyway. I'll try to have the next episode be better. Uh, yeah, once again, Jotaro's never getting the Smash, neither is Goku. I'm probably never going to do another non-video game character again. I just thought that this one could be interesting because I basically already had a move set made out for him. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Love you guys. See you next time.